Howie. <laughs> uh, howdy, fellow quarantinees. In this video, we're going to be talking about something that I really uh, am excited about. It's Darkroom Core Edition. Um, we are going to try to go through three different workflows in this session. One of them is a, a, an event photography workflow where you take a picture and then you decide to print it out. Another one is a photo booth, a manual photo booth workflow where you take multiple pictures and it auto prints. And then the third is a studio workflow or maybe a lab workflow where you ingest multiple pictures and then you decide what kind of output you're going to use for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. What we're going to do is, you know, just like we would in Booth, if we were using Darkroom Booth, we are going to get our um, printer and camera set up. So if you're new to Core Edition, uh, you're going to go to your setup tab and then under printer options, you're going to select your printer. I'm not going to turn my printer on. It's not going to detect it right away, but it does have 4x6 media. In. And the reason for that is you guys don't want to listen to a whole bunch of uh, printer noise. So the printer is set up. Next thing is the camera. So I'm going to click on capture options, detect camera. Oops, I got to turn my camera on. Okay. The computer recognizes the camera. Click detect camera. Let's see. Capture options, tethered options. Oh, I got to check Canon camera. And then now detect camera. Okay, now my camera's ready. So I'm going to switch back over to my photo library and test it out. I've created a new catalog called Demo. Let's go ahead and just snap a picture real quick. Okay, so the camera is connecting and working and I probably need to work on my white balance there but that's okay so the next thing we're gonna want to do for our and this is our event photography workflow we're gonna want to set up a package for a 4x6 so we're gonna go back over to our setup tab go to products and services package groups and I already have one set up under demo we're gonna kinda try to reproduce this um, we're going to click uh, new group, I'll call it new demo. And the package is going to be a 4x6 package. And I'm going to check quick print. I'm not charging any money for it. Uh, it's We're going to pretend that this is an event that's already been prepaid for unlimited prints. Um, a quick print is going to send it directly to my printer. As soon as I click on that package, it's going to start printing. So, um, the next thing we're going to have to do, because we just given it a name, the software doesn't know what size print we're doing. We are going to select six inch prints and select four by six. So, one of the cool, awesome things about Darkroom Core Edition is you have an abundance of different output options. Um, so. Um, my big printer right back there, I can choose uh, 24 inch prints and these are all the different prints I can send to that printer. Um, my 8 inch printer right over there, I can send any of these. Uh, if I put 5 inch paper in there, these are all the different output sizes I can choose. And any and all in between, if I were doing some specialty products, uh, let's say sublimation, I can output to a sublimation printer and then so pretty much any type of output you could think of darkroom core is going to allow hopefully allow you to get to that that point that's where it is very powerful that uh, you have control on uh, a lot of different inputs and outputs and then we also have the digital delivery products as well so we're going to get back to our 4x6 print. Um, one of the things I want to do is I don't want to just print a normal 4x6 print. If I were to click print, it would just print out just like that. I'm going to add a, uh, a template. And I'm going to show you the template that we're going to build real quick. This is a 4x6. Whenever you print it, it then uh, 
prints out a barcode that you can scan and download your image. It has a logo and it's just a four, instead of being a plain four by six, it's a, uh, a square print with some extra stuff on it. So let's go ahead and build that from scratch real quick. And click new. It's gonna be, and we'll call it four by six new. Um, vertical, okay, that all looks fine. Next thing we're gonna do is add our photo. And I know the size, it's gonna be, it's not a four by six or a four by four, it's a 3.5 by 3.5. And it's, um, a quarter inch border. It's just a little easier to do that than uh, eyeball it so I know exactly where it's supposed to be. Let's uh, add that rounded edge. And so I'm just using a predefined mask that's gonna uh, give it that shape. And then I'm going to add a frame around it. And I think it could be a little bit smaller than 1.25. We'll go with half. Um, Let's see what that looks like. Ah, could be a little, oh, it needs to be black. Ah, we can make it just a little bit larger. We'll go ahead and go um, 1.5. Okay, there we go. Um, the next thing we're gonna do is add our uh, darkroom logo and I have that in my documents. Darkroom stuff. Logos. Whoops. Wrong logos. Okay. We'll put that there. And then we need our um, barcode. So the thing about the barcode is we are gonna need to have, um, let's see. our URL that that barcode goes to. So I'm gonna use this event right here. Okay. And I've already given some in the way that I wasn't supposed to yet, but uh, that's the URL we're going to. So click add barcode, make sure it's set to QR paste that URL in and we'll put it right there and then we'll add some text again to okay I think my camera just went to sleep but we'll put right that right there and that's close enough so uh, we'll click save as new border and then we're going to save it uh, in this folder. We want to make sure that we save all of our templates and our X drive under templates, borders, and then some sort of organization in there. Okay, so pretty close. Um, now we're going to go to our package. And the thing about Darkroom Core is there's a little bit of setup to make the end result a lot more smooth. Um, you can do this in different orders, but specifically we're going to make it so we take a picture and we press a number and it prints. So we can take three pictures and decide the best one to print. Um, and then uh, we'll come along with a different, uh, a different workflow flow right after that. But So I think we are just about done. This is the new one that we just created. And the other thing that I was gonna show you was, I'm gonna add an upload to um, eventgallery.com. That's where we just got that, um, where we were just looking. Um, so this is gonna be the original image as shot, and it's gonna automatically upload and we're gonna call it, um, I think,
think this is the right area. 20, 20, 26, 20. I think that's what I called it, but we'll find out in just a second when we test it. And then everybody close your eyes because I forgot to disable something so we I can reset it up for you guys. We're gonna go ahead and uncheck that. Um, that's auto print. We'll get back to that in just a second. Okay, let's wake that camera back up. And I'm gonna just make sure Darkroom still sees it. And we're gonna select our new demo package group. Oh, we also have to turn on the printer, so it might get a little noisy. Let's go to printers. Uh, auto detect. Okay, my printer is detected. And let's give this a shot. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this around and take a picture of myself just so it's not a, a picture on the wall. Okay, let's see if it works. It's importing. Let's say that's a, I can do better than that. There we go. Okay, so I get to decide which one I like better. I'm gonna say this one, we'll click our four by six package that should print and then also upload to our event gallery page. Sorry, it's gonna get a little bit louder here. There we go. And if I take my phone out and open my camera app, let's test that out. There we go. And it went to that page, which is the page it was supposed to go to. It's not seeing this image because I think I probably mistyped something. So let's see if we can get that working again. Um, let's see, where did I go wrong? Okay, so there's the new correct one we want to go to. Let's update that package. Um, go to core. It looks like the URL is going to be just a little bit different. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Packages, demo new, 4x6, double click. Oh, we're not going to change that we're going to change the template. It's a template that's wrong. Um, okay. It's slightly different URL. Okay. Save changes. And let's try this um, one more time. But this time, um, well, I'll We'll get to the next topic. I, I set aside about 20 minutes for each topic. Uh, let's uh, switch back over to we're in my photo library, but uh, this can also be done from the, the workshop. That's an awesome picture right there. Okay, and we're gonna click the number one for package one. And let's see how this works this time. Okay, new print, camera app, just so everybody can see it, how this works. There are my pictures, and now I can download, share, save. My picture that was just taken, that is, uh, that is awesome. That, that is just awesome.
Um, I've been using Darkroom for about 17, about 17 years and what's coming out of the software. I've only been working here for about five, but you've been using the application or a version uh, like a predecessor of Darkroom Core uh, for about 17 years. What we're doing these days is just amazing. Um, and that's all has to do with the technology and uh, our awesome developers. So the next thing on my list is a uh, manual photo booth. So um, we are gonna, we don't need to set up another template like this. Uh, you guys know how to do that. You just, we've already done it once. The only difference on this one is we added a um, multiple photos rather than a, uh, adding four different ones. So that is a two by six print. Um, so that's the template. We're gonna do two different uh, setups for this. Um, one more similar to the, the package option that we just did. We're gonna say a, um, a package two by six. We're gonna do quick print again so it goes straight to the printer without any questions. Uh, add local print item. We're gonna select our two by six from six inch prints. Okay, so this one's gonna be a little different. Um, we're gonna click B to pull up our borders. Go to our two by six template. And now you can click on images, drag them in, zoom in. Um, let's convert uh, one of them to black and white. Uh, one of them to retro so and then if I click my 2x6 it's now going to send a 2 or a 4x6 to the printer it should be sending waiting on 2x6 okay so let's look and see what we got going on printer options 4x6 Print sizes, two by six. Everything looks fine there. Oh, there it goes. It just needed to be rescanned. So now it's going to print out. Two two by sixes. Um, so that takes a little bit more steps than what we want to do for a photo booth but I just want to show you that is an option that you can actually drag and drop and manipulate the template and then print it when you're ready we are gonna make that situation that scenario work a little a lot more smoothly so we are going to go to our capture options we are going to um, go to auto print and you can see earlier I disabled this. I had it set to automatically upload to Event Gallery. Um, I'm gonna remove that. I'm gonna add a two by six print. And then I'm gonna add the template to that print. And you'll see it, it'll give me a little message in just a second. It's saying, it's so it sees that there's four different images inside of this template. So for every four pictures that I take, it's going to then um, print one uh, or two strips. So now I gotta find something to take a picture of so you guys know that um, I am doing this stuff for real and not trying to trick you. Okay, I'm going to just take some pictures of some photos in my office real quick. Let's see. Oh, I'm also going to turn off that template. Okay, so every four pictures it should print. And then zoom in and take a picture of Daisy. Okay. Let's see if this works. 
So it should take those four images, put it into a template, and then send it to the printer. This is a scary thing about doing these things live. You hope that it works and that you didn't miss a checkbox. So I forgot to check uh, that box right there. Let's try that one more time. I might just take four pictures of myself real quick. <clears throat> Switch back over to Photo Workshop. One, two, three, four. Okay. So now what it's doing is it's taking those images, putting it into the template. And printing, and that's a manual photo booth um, with darkroom core. You control the shutter there. This actually works out pretty well for the situation that we're in right now, where nobody actually has to touch anything, touch other people, that you're able to distance yourself, take pictures, there's no touch screen um, that you're working with. Um, so right now we are tethered and I might save this for a different one if you guys really want it. I can show you the same tether, uh, the same idea but using um, a wireless camera. So one of the cool things about Darkroom Core is I'm going to uncheck this because we've gotten past that point. Um, you have your uh, tether, different tethered cameras that you can use. This, this is the list of cameras that are supported. Right here we have the hot folder camera. And this is one that I personally use all the time. Um, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the, this little cable right here. And let's go ahead and I might just turn that camera off and the printer off just so we have a little less noise. Um, but you can use a hot folder camera and if your camera has wireless built into it you can then um, have it sync up with a folder so it transmits to a folder and as soon as it drops in that folder it imports in I have a video on that at um, darkroomsupport.com so if you're interested in that there's already a video uploaded and available um, so that is event photography um, and the manual photo booth. And we're moving a little bit faster than I thought. Um, but let's see. We are going to get into um, a, a studio workflow or a lab workflow. But this is actually really helpful for event photographers. And it even can be used with a, um, a photo booth set up for upselling. So we're in our. Um, demo um, package group right here. The software comes with uh, this guy right here. Looks like I have a um, template on that that shouldn't be there. Um, 8 by 10s, 2 5 by 7s, 8 wallets. These are the sizes you're used to when you're buying your uh, pictures of your kids um, for school. So the software comes with this but you can create your packages however you want. So let's imagine that you're a photo booth operator and you're taking um, pictures with darkroom booth and you're outputting like this. You can save the original files to a, uh, a folder and use darkroom core to import those files, the individuals, and then offer four by six prints, eight by tens, five by sevens, and or uh, I've even seen some people do mugs on site where they print out the, uh, the image and then um, heat transfer uh, a mug. So any of these weird ideas that you might have in your head, Darkroom Core can allow you to do that. So let's kind of see how that kind of workflow would be set up. Um, I'm gonna create a, a new package group um, just to kind of keep things a little bit separate. Um, so 
So in here we're gonna have, let's, just in case I need to print something, I'm gonna select a four by six. Um, and we'll do, oops, I need to rename it, four by six. I'm gonna do a quick print, add package, 5x7. Now I don't have a 5x7 printer connected, but this is just so you can see if you're using a 5x7. I do have a 5x7 printer connected. I don't have the media for 5x7. So this DS40 that I'm using, and very similar with a lot of other printers out there, that they get, work, will work with 4x6 media, 5x7 media, 6x8, 6x9. Um, you'll want to check with your printer manufacturer. Um, so this is the process of setting up the different package sizes or print sizes. Um, let's say eight by 10, quick print. And what that quick print does is it just sends it straight to the printer instead of saving it as a package or saving it to my cart. Um, and oops, let's switch to eight inch prints. Okay, so that's how you would set up the different packages. Um, the, I'm gonna create a new catalog. Um, let me just call it studio, finish, and let's see. We're gonna drag some images in. Let me find some pictures. So these are just images that I have on my computer. I'm gonna just drag them in to import the images. See, so now if I go to my photo workshop, I can then work on my images. I can, uh, let's say a customer, I'm working at a lab, and a customer is coming with a memory card, I can select all of these images and then um, print. So for those people that are event photographers, you can, if you have a, um, a store or a location that people come in you can actually expand and do some lab printing uh, for your local customers um, but all I'd have to do is click 4x6 and they would all print out as one 4x6 um, and let me see if I can find um, these images have been kind of fixed up already but um, let me see I think I see something right there so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to retouch and retouch workshop and what I'm going to do is we'll do clone Oops. and this works very similar to Photoshop you know what I thought it was something in the picture it was something on my monitor but the idea is that you can actually clone uh, from your image something that you would do in uh, in Photoshop you can do directly inside darkroom core so I just wanted to show you some of the other uh, options that you have within um, darkroom core that uh, uh, another thing that you might want to use is um, this is on a blue background uh, it comes with the same um, green screen engine or algorithm that Booth does. So if you're familiar with that, let's see how well this will work. Cause that's not a chroma key blue background. Let's go with this one just to make it a little bit more festive. And she's not showing up because I have it set to green. But if I switch to blue, eh close uh, it's it's important to use uh, 
actual uh, let, let me see if I can find it uh, I don't have any green images on on this or, you know what software comes with some I just want to kind of show you the uh, There's Penny. Let's try that again. Okay, there we go. That looks much better. Um, so it has the same green screen algorithm as Darkroom Booth. Um, but um, if, let's say, she had um, a green, uh, there's green in her outfit, we can actually go in and mask I'm gonna just pretend part of her outfit went out here you can draw in parts that might have been taken out so that's real helpful whenever somebody is wearing green and they go into your uh, and get their picture taken that you can adjust some of the back in like maybe a shirt um, so that's uh, the retouch workshop and the um, re uh, green screen masking tool um, one other thing that we have in here is the uh, ability to re retouch in Photoshop so you can check that and uh, retouch directly into Photoshop um, let's, uh, and, um, so let's say I was having issues right there the masking tool would actually be pretty good but if I click that it should pull into Photoshop now on some computers I just want to point out that this uh, um, with current versions of Photoshop there might be some um, compatibility issues so it is pulling into Photoshop for mine but um, let's see do I have so yeah I'm in Photoshop if for some reason you're uh, using this option it's not working for you there's a workaround for it uh, we'll go ahead and save retouch photo um, you can That. Um, as many of you guys know I am a Photoshop user um, I use it quite a bit um, and if I didn't have that option I would be you know uh, that would not be cool <laughs> so um, one thing I want to show you is you can drag straight from the software into Photoshop and I'm going to just do a quick invert and then now that you can see that change from Photoshop has been now made in Darkroom we've just uh, updated the original source file um, we can go to open container folder when you drag it from Photoshop you're dragging essentially this image in and, and Darkroom is just looking at that image one of the important things to remember about Darkroom core is that it is non-destructive um, any changes that you make the actual original file are not affected until it's output. So if I were to go into uh, and zoom in and then save the changes um, and then click away from that file and then back on it, I can always zoom back out because the original file has not been affected at all. So that's something really important to remember about um, Darkroom core, or really Darkroom in general, that it's non-destructive as much as possible. Um, so we've kind of been in the photo library, which is where you're going to store your images. It's kind of what you can think of as like your uh, filing cabinet. Um, whenever people shot on film, they would have uh, take pictures, do contact sheets, and then put the negatives with the contact sheets in a filing cabinet so if they ever need to reprint them they can find them that is way, the way you should think of your photo library that uh, it's going to house your images by event each catalog should be an event your photo workshop is what you should consider your back in film days your enlarger where you're going to edit the actual image um, anybody that's using Lightroom it's very similar Lightroom's develop module um, this is where you're going to uh, zoom in, crop, print. Um, uh, one of the other things that a lot of people 
um, really like to use is the um, oh, let me switch over to a better image um, let's click on this guy a little man Ben um, the um, reset it back okay the uh, vignette can make uh, add a little bit of focus to the image uh, it draws them towards the subject so a lot of people like to just add that vignette or a uh, minimum event uh, vignette um, there's a few different options there just to kind of bring that in as an effect another uh, small thing about this area the focus um, using the plus five focus and you can't see really um, how much it's changing it but it's changing it uh, like if we were to zoom in we can see it became a little bit sharper for print sharpening um, this little triangle right here that's adding five for focus is uh, works very very well uh, you should add print sharpening whenever you print your image so that right there you can um, if these two options are something you use all the time you can save those to an attribute um, let's just say system defaults and will apply those effects all the time um, also for green screen if you always shoot green screen and you make some changes in your dropout menu here that work perfect for your type of setup your lighting your backdrop all those things you can save those changes to an attribute and as system defaults so anytime you shoot green screen you'll get that same effect and that same look every time we kind of skipped the orders uh, tab um, this is where all your orders go and are saved so any, any of the ones that we just printed are all right here and we can go in and reprint but um, you can have this set to auto print off and compile orders um, and then have um, like if you're using a, a server setup you can actually have multiple people out photographing and then all coming into a central server and the one person that's controlling the server and making sure that uh, things don't print automatically so let's say you're photographing and you're selling prints you can have the photographers send them in and then the, that one central server uh, person is controlling what prints and what doesn't based on purchases and I've added a uh, a how to set up network guide on um, our knowledge by knowledge base darkroom support.com for the networking setup it requires core edition and darkroom pro um, in order at least those two uh, at minimum to set up a network um, and then pro services this is a uh, uh, two different options they work with Labtricity or PhotoReflect they're a separate company um, but PhotoReflect allows you to send on uh, sell online um, so you can check out PhotoReflect.com and then Labtricity allows you to if you don't have let's say you want to print out a, uh, a canvas print you don't have a large canvas printer um, you can send it to a uh, local lab or a national lab and have them handle the fulfillment so these two work together real well where you can take pictures and then post them online and then if you sell stuff on photo reflect you can sell whatever you want and then have your lab uh, take care of the fulfillment and ship it directly to your customer and that's just extra money in your pocket on top of the event you're doing upsell without actually having to take the equipment with you um, so definitely worth checking out photoreflect.com and labtricity.com uh, they're uh, really the, the same company photo reflect electricity at this point um, and then um, the uh, setup tab where we did all of our setup it's important that you get everything right here to make your life easier at the event make sure it's working here but this is where you put everything together um, and I have a whole bunch of videos for uh, your different setup options uh, but these were three different workflows and then the last thing that I didn't talk about at all was uh, presentation mode um, this is used more in a studio environment but it could also be used for let's say a um, a large party where you have photographers and then you have salespeople 
you can go into I'm gonna just switch over to uh, yeah switch to presentation mode so this would allow me to let's say I don't have it out but use a barcode scan somebody's uh, ticket and then pull up their image and then uh, sell to them um, so this is the presentation mode for event um, presentations let me see if I switch over to portrait and I might have changed this one um, it's presentation mode and this is a presentation mode mode for studio events um, so weddings and those type of things but that is just kind of a quick overview of darkroom core right at 41 minutes um, so the um, if you, there ain't anything specific that you want to see or if you want to go a little bit further into this rabbit hole with me just uh, comment let me know what you want to do and we can focus more on a specific topic or maybe a different workflow that I didn't cover um, and we will try to bring it in a another Facebook live session thank you so much for watching once again take care of yourself take care of each other Stay separated from people while you can, and let's kind of slow this thing down. Um, and uh, just be healthy and think about um, not only yourself, your family, but other people and their families. And we'll get through this. We got this. I'll see you next time.